Welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. We're talking about the ethereal body versus the astral body and how this kind of weird, complicated subject may shed some light on various misconceptions involving this ever-evolving and ever-confusing subject of our continual existences beyond the confines of this dimension and this body the ultimate theme here at afterlife topics and metaphysics before we jump into this topic let's see a couple things i want to mention one i'm sorry about in the last video that there were facebook notifications and beeps going off i mistakenly believed that if i were to turn my volume down i wouldn't get those but that's clearly not what happened. And uh, so now I am keeping my internet turned off. So that won't happen while I make a video. Uh, second point, um, as usual, if you enjoy these kinds of long form podcast style discussions by myself, maybe some future guests coming up around the corner, but mostly me blabbing away uh, about subjects like life after death and complex metaphysical points of view then i encourage you to please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell help keep this operation going as well as the patreon at patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics i'll uh, maybe bring that up toward the end if you want to take a look at what of what that's all about you can get involved in classes or other benefits or basically be able to talk to me and help shape the channel if you want to donate youtube will not monetize this channel because it is too controversial so i re require people's help with this so if you want to help out with that that is appreciated to continue I've always been confused or uncertain about the concept of an ethereal body and how that relates to the astral body. And certainly there's um, Eastern religious concepts that relate to this gradient of bodies, but there may be more truth to this than I've given it credit for, or at least this is the best way that those of us attempting to understand these crazy subjects can make any sense out of it. And one way is to uh, identify this kind of in-between existence uh, as an ethereal body that is potentially gluing our astral body into our physical um, 3D body, if you will. Now, you may be wondering, what the hell am I talking about? Well, just to back up, uh, primarily what one of the things we talk about in this channel is the astral projection experience. Now, there's a lot of interesting misconceptions or at least odd points of view surrounding this topic. Uh, not just astral projection, but the subject of life after death itself. The idea that we can be dead on this side and our individualities continue into other realms. There's a whole camp of people who believe that uh, there is no tangible existence on the other side. We float around as orbs of light, specks, um, maybe at best shapes, maybe a, a purple hexagon if we are lucky. Uh, but we are not, um, we don't look like ourselves and we don't have form. And sometimes uh, the evidence that people cite, and I've seen some funky, I've, I've seen some funky examples of evidence to support this point, including um, ghost photos of orbs, which half the time those are just dust particles and I don't know how we can use that as evidence of anything uh, but also the fact that when we practice the out-of-body experience very often we are in a non-body and non-form we are just pure consciousness floating around the bedroom and then people who have those experiences surmise that this is our state in uh, the post-mortem existence pure consciousness no form no physicality no shape just uh, floating around, and, um, and that's it. That's the whole afterlife. And but then other people adamantly disagree, and certainly I am among those people. There are people who 
um, very uh, insistently will say that they have been to worlds that are solid and real and physical like this one. And some people have misidentified this to be maybe maybe some kind of a parallel dimension of no no not no, rather a parallel timeline, because how could the afterlife, the so-called spirit world, be physical and real, and solid with cities and people living their lives, because it's supposed to be this completely non-physical existence of just floating around. For me, it's never been a very controversial issue because when I first began having out-of-body experiences I was having that former type where I was non-physical just floating around as consciousness floating around the room and then I began having astral projection experiences appearing physical and tangible as myself on the other side what is the difference between these experiences what the heck is going on so on a thread um, we have Jürgen Zive. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Jürgen. I think I always do that, but he's the eminent, I would say the eminent out-of-body experiencer and researcher in this field. And he posts on the group. And uh, oh, by the way, I may, may be hanging out with him in the UK. I'm doing a little mini UK speaking tour coming up. And we have one event that is booked, fully booked, in Southampton area uh, on September 21st but uh, I may be doing a more casual event in London uh, before or after then there is no date for certain so if you want to hang out with me possibly meet at some big bookstore and or a pub or something along those lines I do like the traditional English pubs that's a lot of fun uh, then uh, stay in touch on the forum for more information okay Tangent is finished. Jürgen has weighed in on the subject. He says, in our joint study, and he's referring to the book Consciousness Beyond the Body, Evidence and Reflections, which has numerous authors to its name and has attempted to be an academic almost uh, perspective of the out-of-body experience while keeping it, you know, taking, taking the subject seriously. Uh, it says, Chapter 8, I am dealing with this exact issue in a great detail. As far as I know, there are only two conditions which allow us to visit the physical dimension during OBEs. The astral body is not one of them. So he doesn't mention what these two conditions are. I imagine if you download this book that he says is uh, free. Uh, Consciousness Beyond the Body, Evidence and Reflections to see here what it is. I have not read this book yet. I've uh, been a bit tied up with other projects, but eventually I'll get to it. But the gist of what he's saying is um, to be able to explore our physical domain while out of your body, it's not going to happen necessarily in your normal astral body. Be and this matches with my experiences because I've had occasional ver verifiable I guess some would use the word veridical experiences in the out-of-body state. Not enough. I wish I've had more. But, for example, one time I was in a hostel, traveling as I always am. Typically, I live out of a backpack. Um, I went out of my body and saw this roommate who was sleeping in this weird contorted position. And so I came back to my body flipped on my phone light and tiptoed over to his bed to verify what he was doing. I spied on another roommate one time in his room doing a meditation practice in a bathrobe. thought it was quite odd. I was able to verify all of that. Um, I've been out of my body and spied. Yes, I guess this is a common theme, isn't it? Living in Los Angeles, spied on a roommate, saw some specific things he was doing, a specific way he was laying, and I snuck into his bedroom because I'm a creep like that. Uh, what else? Um, there's been a bunch more. Um, seeing stuff like in the house and being able to verify it like uh, a scratch on a wall. Something very basic like that. But I, I keep an eye out for that stuff. Anyway, all these instances I am either in a very translucent form of my body, like kind of the cliche ghost who is see-through or invisible, or I am just free floating consciousness, just like floating around. 
Um, if I have like an arm that's see-through, I can't even use it to open stuff. My hand just goes through the wall. I'm not using legs. I'm just floating and I'm going through walls. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a ghost. And um, yet when I have the astral projection experience, I'm no longer in that state. I am now fully, you know, formed in an astral body. So what Jürgen says, the astral plane attracts the astral body like a magnet. Now, this is really eye-opening. You know, it explains, like, sometimes I will roll out of bed and I'll be in that kind of ethereal state, this ethereal body, or this non-physical or non, um, non-solid, non-form-based existence, and I'll still be like that for a minute, appearing on the astral side, and I'll just kind of, like, I'll just kind of phase into an astral body, like... Almost like <clears throat> that that vibrational compatibility requires the astral body. So we never really see anything other than the astral plane when astrally projecting, except for the two exceptions, neither of which harness the astral body. I don't know what these two exceptions are. Maybe one is like remote viewing. Maybe one is being in this ethereal body state. Um, I mentioned... Sounds a lot like my conclusions, including how in the near-Earth astral state, I am not in an astral body, but I'm either highly translucent or just free-floating consciousness. Jürgen responds, Yes, exactly. In your case, you are more likely to utilize the higher body or consciousness. I suppose he means this free-floating consciousness. The other option is using the etheric body, the one binding the astral to the physical. Interesting concept, seems to speak out of Buddhism, but there may be some truth behind this. People who have accidents who are, okay, this is key, guys. Who, people who have accidents or are undergoing uh, anesthetics are sometimes using the ethereal body, which allows them to still use physical equivalent perception. So this is like in the NDE, they're floating, up, you know, they're watching the operating theater happen. And notice sometimes in the NDE, they're not in any kind of tangible body. As soon as you are experienced in projection, you immediately enter the astral body. This is why Robert Monroe's experiments, projecting to a physical, lo physical locale, failed. You have to be a beginner or have an accident in order to project to the physical or, as I said, utilize the mental causal body to do so. There are certain characteristics when using either. Interesting. I can still have these experiences sometimes. I don't know if it was strictly with a beginner. These are, these are like different types of experiences, right? So you can have experiences in a non-body as, as free-floating consciousness, which appears to be possible to, you know, to be compatible with this world that if you want to spy on people, if you want to be a ghost. And this probably explains why so-called ghosts appear to us like orbs or they're like the quintessential Casper the Friendly Ghost, some kind of a, a pseudomorph. And I think that, that that's the proper terminology for an, a um, person or a soul that is in an incomplete form is I would call them pseudomorphs. So when you talk about like a, a ghost that goes boo and how it looks kind of weird, kind of ugly, we're kind of getting into Beetlejuice territory. It's because it's an incompleted mental projection of a person. It's not, it's not a, a proper form or a construct. It's a uh, interpretation. And so maybe this is why people will in, in the folklore see a headless ghost because it is it is an ethereal form of somebody that doesn't really get it right. So this may explain that phenomenon. Um, but if I'm in that state, it's because I'm going out of body and I'm not projecting. And it, this arises out of sleep paralysis for me. So I'm laying on the bed and then I pull myself out and now I'm floating around the room. One of two things will happen. I'll either switch to the astral world, in which case a pseudomorph form or a um, ethereal body, or even as Jürgen says, it could very well be a causal, just pure consciousness-based um, form, because I do think I've been in that state. 
um, immediately morphs into a, a compatible form, which is the astral body. It's like the astral world is not even compatible unless you're in a body just like this world. You have to be in one to be able to even interact. And if you weren't, you know, it wouldn't make any sense because, again, you wouldn't be able to interact with people. You would be a ghost in that world. And um, talking to lots of people on the astral plane, it is funny because they've told me that they have problems with ghosts on that side. This is, this is going to be a whole different video someday, a whole different subject. But, you know, there um, I, I've had memories of basically ghost hunting on that side, like my parallel self for fun with uh, friends actually going to haunted locations where pseudomorphic ent entities are hanging around. And it's much different in this world where a ghost is just kind of, uh, kind of you know, a, a just a, a person, an individual who is kind of bleeding into this world. And it's uh, very, very subtle. Uh, a pseudomorphic form on that side could be much closer to what we saw in the film Ghostbusters, you know, a slimer coming out of the wall. All kinds of pseudomorphic entities hanging around, not really in a proper astral body, and inhabiting a location maybe between one dimension and another. And it becomes very funny, very weird, very freaky. And I have all these astral memories of doing this for fun on that side. And uh, there's like this one house that's in the woods, and it's a big multi-bedroom house that really is old and abandoned. And I've multiple times have memories of going into this place with some of my friends and literally ghost hunting, like, you know, trying to capture or encounter these pseudomorphic entities that all decide to cluster together and live in this in this old house. And it's, you know, very fun and weird and doesn't surprise me that it's something that I'd be into. So, um, wow, going on from one topic to another tonight, look at me. So, um, so again, so you're more likely to be in a kind of, you know, floating around as free floating consciousness, if you're mostly experimenting with um, uh, sleep paralysis states, but full on astral projection, when that happens, it's like you immediately immediately find yourself in um, an equivalent astral body. Now, if some people their whole modus operandi is ascending consciousness and not going to the astral plane because it's uh, for peasants and it's beneath them and they want to ascend to higher and greater conditions in what we might call a causal non-physical you know purely mental body i think these are very much linked together so i think when we call this this ethereal form a pseudomorphic form or a form of pure consciousness we could easily say that this is also part of what we call a causal existence because you have no form, you're just pure thought moving around. And in my opinion, this shows that the benefits and negative sides of this because in the astral world, if you want to be part of civilization, if you want to you know, hang out and perform hobbies and golf and grow a garden or fly around and have fun and enjoy certain things on that level, you got to have the astral body. If you want to be pure energy and float through the cosmos and not be hindered into a particular form or environment and be able to say, hmm, I'm going to go check out Jupiter, I'm going to go or I'm going to go check out this purely mental existence where it's just pure thoughts and shapes and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. You can't do that in an astral body. You have to be in that pure consciousness state if you like that kind of thing, if you're not into the astral plane stuff, or maybe you like both. Maybe you want to have full breadth of experiences, in which case you may need to learn how to switch between those modes. And after you're dead, it's no exception. Most likely you'll be in an astral state, but then you can learn to switch to a causal state and be able to explore and do all that kind of stuff as a pure non-physical soul, which, you know, that that's a whole different subject. But then just like here, you can stop that projection and then come back to your astral body and you know continue playing golf growing a garden or ghost hunting and looking for slimer in an old abandoned building or whatever takes whatever whatever you want to do as a beautiful individual soul who is expressing the universe in your own creative way let's wrap the video up and see what else jurgen said uh, here is an excerpt from the article after many more obes i found out that for myself 
At least it was unnatural, if at all possible, to project into a physical real time zone or space, but instead into a copy of the physical world which never quite matched our physical reality. We could call that the near earth astral plane or the ethereal plane, which is this kind of weird dreamlike um, nether world like dimension sometimes we find ourselves in. The natural environment of our projected consciousness. Oh, let me intersect though. But you can identify things in our world in that uh, nether world like uh, near earth astral. Maybe I'll disagree with Jurgen because I can say that I've done it. You know, I've been able to identify stuff. You can do it, but you have to be able to see what is happening on this side versus what's happening on that side. So you have to be able to discern between those, but you can identify things. Uh, I've done it and a lot of OBEers who are more skilled than I am have also done that. The natural environment of a projected consciousness can almost match the actual physical environment to such an extent that we are fooled into accepting it as physical reality. Sometimes it is almost identical or it may have changed in degrees from subtle unnoticeable differences to a complete transformation, with furniture and windows having moved, carpets added, wallpaper changed, or even the room transported to a different place. It's very con confusing because Jurgen could also be describing the near earth, not the near earth, but the um, the second earth middle astral level. So it's um, so it's, this might not be the netherworld mental projection state, which also exists. Excuse me, this might also be the near earth state. Not, I'm sorry, the middle, the middle astral state where it roughly corresponds to this world, a building here may correspond and be a building on that side. But, you know, for example, recently I projected in one of these hostels I'm staying at and um, I was still in a hostel, but it was populated by real people I could talk to and interact with from that middle astral level. So this wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite what, what, what Jürgen is saying here, I don't think. Um, even people, complete strangers, could be found squat. Okay. Squatting or uninvited in our familiar places, the, uh, the time of year could alter as well. So basically, okay, he is describing the middle astral level. Uh, okay, so I might, I might have been slightly confused. So he is, so he's, he's talking about the middle astral levels. He's not talking about the nether world. What he's saying is that. You might be thinking that you're projecting into this world, but you're projecting into that middle level. Okay, and so um, it's easy to confuse between the two. Um, the time of year could alter as well as the weather, and curiously, despite all this, in the face of all rational consideration, we still would clearly identify it as our own space. Okay, so I get it now. I was a little bit confused. Um, Basically, uh, the way I see it is that sometimes I can be in this, what we call, what I call the near earth astral, the ethereal world in the ethereal body, which is not the astral body, and be floating around and I'll see stuff in that environment, not on this side. So it gets kind of weird, kind of confusing. Like I might see, I don't know, objects or just weird stuff that, like while I'm looking through those ethereal eyes, I'll see things that are not on this plane. So it might look a little bit different, but it's still this um, world. This is where so-called ghosts inhabit, who can watch us. It's that near earth state. The astral earth is the astral plane. So we can just, we can just uh, clarify that. The astral earth is the astral plane which is part of the spectrum of conditions that many of us go to when we die. So we could also say it is the quote, the afterlife. Um, and it corresponds to this world for, for many different reasons. Like I've gotten into this in other videos. I'll talk about this in the future, but it is the corresponding second earth, the astral version of this world, which has many familiar areas to it. People, I guess, who do out-of-body experiences mistakenly believe that when they're on the second earth, because there can be a familiarity between that world and this world, they think that they're still on this world and it makes them very frustrated or they think that the whole experience must be getting dreamed up 
because how could the other side uh, uh, resemble this world so much? But what you don't understand is that it's one frequency above this world with many of the same environments. But like Jürgen says, it can be on a different timeline, the weather might be different, and the building you're in might superficially look like the one you're in now, but it's changed because it's in a different dimension. There's different people living in it. There's different objects being moved around, different stuff being added to it. So whatever the original template was that copied over from this side or however that works, it has changed over a long period of time, but it's not this world. I'm very familiar with this, even to the point where the places I project into on that level, the reason things are different is because I'm living in that space and I've rearranged things. I could open the drawers and find sets of my clothes that I bought as a parallel version of myself that I have no memory of and find evidence of this other life I'm leading on that side. That's how crazy it gets. Okay, I know this video has gone kind of long. Hopefully you like this kind of stuff. Hopefully you're into all of this. It gets confusing, but look, it's all consistent. It makes sense. You just have to bear with it and um, and just, you know, help rather just listen to the reports, pick it apart and put the pieces together. It, it'll start to make sense, I promise. This is Cyrus. If you like this stuff, consider checking out my books like Understanding Life After Death, The Afterlife and Beyond, where I go into much deeper, crazier subjects from the origins of life to artificial intelligence. All this is on afterlifetopics.com. You can check out the Facebook page. Again, if you want to support this work, if you want to become a patron as little as a couple bucks a month, that goes a long way when I'm juggling all this with living out of a backpack and finding places to live and you know feeding myself and you know, as a wandering author, and um, any support like that definitely helps out. All right, this is Cyrus, Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. I'll see you all on the other side, which is a really silly tagline. I'm not going to keep using that. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll just see you guys on the next video.